Greetings, welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith, and this is an older article, but it grabbed my attention and I've been wanting to do a webcast on the topic. It's from the Washington Post, published online August 2nd. The title is this, There isn't really anything magical about it. Why more millennials are avoiding sex. I like the article in the sense that it's very counterintuitive. We tend to think of these younger people uh, growing up, say in their early 20s, uh, that are just somehow constantly having sex and fornicating all over the place. But increasingly, they're actually having less sex outside of marriage than older generations. Uh, let me read some things from the articles. Uh, it says that a study published Tuesday in the journal Archives of Sexual Behavior finds that younger millennials born in the 1990s are more than twice as likely to be sexually inactive in their early 20s as the previous generation was. Even older millennials are more sexually active than the younger group is. In fact, it says recent research also shows that overall millennials, people born between the early 1980s and 2000, have fewer sexual partners than baby boomers and those in Generation X, the group immediately preceding them. That would be essentially their parents, and maybe even often in some cases their grandparents, that they're actually having fewer sexual partners than the generations before. Uh, it's an interesting article. It's, uh, it's actually fairly complex. I wish I could say it's because these younger millennials were discovering certain moral principles. It's not necessarily the case. Uh, if you really take a look, a lot of it's because they're just ambitious. Some of them say that, well, I'm just too busy. I'm trying to get things done. I'm trying to study, and I don't have time for these kinds of relationships. It even indicates that pornography has made an impact, that you've got young men that feel satisfied enough with the pornography they see, and so it's preventing them from having to get involved in messy kind of relationships and actually dating and talking to a human being. There's comments that it's a generation where there are fewer face-to-face -face interactions with people. Uh, they're constantly messaging, uh, Snapchatting, they're texting their friends. And as a result, with fewer face-to-face -face relationships, there are fewer romantic relationships that develop. And also, it's a generation full of many distractions. Uh, that yes, there's relationships they have, but there's just so much going on for them to do. Uh, there were some encouraging things. Uh, there was this particular comment from a 19-year-old uh, that I really did enjoy. Uh, it says, concern, I won't give her name. They give her first name. I won't mention her name. Uh, but the, the article says, she wants what she calls an old-fashioned relationship leading to marriage and kids. But fellow students are into, quote, very casual one-night stands, going to bars and going home with someone, she said. Uh, it says, now this is interesting, the reason she didn't want to use her full name is because, quote, I don't want all my professors reading about how, how I'm a virgin. Uh, isn't that strange? We've changed in our culture where a young woman is going to be ashamed if her professors discover that she's not actually engaging in premarital sex. That's how turned around the world is. Even worse, she says that her parents worry about her. Uh, this is just from the article. She says, they always ask me, are you against relationships? Why don't you have a boyfriend? My mom, she hooked up all the time in college. She's like, I would still love you, but are you gay? But for me, she continues, it's not anything about chastity or fear of sex. I'm just like, eh, it'll happen. You know, not exactly on the right track. I'm glad she aspires to a more traditional relationship, but what a shock to see that she's afraid she'll be shamed in front of her professors for being a virgin, or that her parents are actually worried because her parents hooked up all the time in college and had all these sexual flings and they're worried their daughter isn't. It really is an upside down world. So on one hand, I'm encouraged by the trend, but what I'm not encouraged by is that it's a trend that exists, frankly, in a bit of confusion where choices are being made but, and people are seeing some kind of benefit, but they don't know why. Uh, it's like Paul describes of Gentiles and when he talks to them in the book of Acts, just stumbling around in the dark, not really knowing why what's true is true and why what's beneficial is beneficial. 
The fact is, God describes good and healthy relationships. God created family. God created sex. You can go on our website. Uh, we have actually articles, believe it or not, about that and telecast about that. I encourage you to consider looking those up. God actually created sex between man and woman uh, for marriage and for the building of family. And he actually says uh, through Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 13 that his laws and his commandments are for our good. So while I'm willing to celebrate this trend that we see in younger millennials, I wish it wasn't in a sea of confusion. I wish they had the clarity that simply seeking after God always provides. Thank you for watching. Please check out everything we have available at tomorrowsworld.org.